You ready, Don? Okay, let's take care of the minutes. Under the agreement approved under the K Camp um, stabilization program, we it needs to be said in there that that's a three year commitment. <coughs> that when you sign that stabilization, it basically, you know, procures their services for three years. Otherwise, it makes it. This sounds just like, oh, well, we approved the rate stabilization program, which doesn't mean anything. It locked us into three years. I think that needs to be identified. I don't have a problem adding three years. It wasn't part of the motion, so well, we could add it at the end. Sure. Or we could add three-year rate stabilization program above in the correspondence. That's fine. Okay, so in K Camp, three year rate stabilization program? We, rate stabilization program agreement, um, I would say three year contract because it's basically, we were signing a, it's an agreement, but it contracts for three years. I would just put three year contract behind that at the end. Can that option? Yeah. You read it back to me once you get it done. And K Camp Rate Stabilization Program, comma, for your contract. Or we can just put three year rate stabilization program agreement. Um, where did you put that? Right. Uh, up under the correspondence. Oh, oh. Okay. At the very end of the sentence. Oh. I would say three year rate stabilization myself. But that's misleading because what, what it's doing, by signing that, you're agreeing to a three-year contract. It's not a three-year rate stabilization because the contract already exists. It's a one-year option, but we chose three years. Money limit. Yeah. It's for clarification so that someone reading this who so, doesn't know what it is. So why, after K-CAMP? K-CAMP rate stabilization program agreement, three-year contract. Why don't we just put... K camp comma three year rate stabilization program agreement. Because Just put it's three not, year in there. Right, but it's not a rate stabilization program agreement for three years. It's a three year contract that if we agree to, we get the rate stabilization. You have to sign the contract to get the rate stabilization for one year. Remember, the the deduction's only good for one year. It's like, it was that 11000 something off the first year. You don't get that again for the continuing two years. You just get it the first year. But you get locked into a rate stabilization where it will not exceed says, It doesn't say anything about the discount in that. I would say you put three years after K-Camp, right before. Okay. Rate stabilization. Because that's what we were signing, a three-year rate, rate stabilization program agreement. The motion was on the rate stabilization program agreement. It had nothing to do with the discount that we received. Then why would you agree to it if it had nothing to do with the discount? It does have something to do with it, but the motion didn't have anything, didn't say anything about it. We accepted the agreement, which part of it is a, re, a reduction there. Any other corrections? I, I'm going to strongly discourage you, Don, from using words with my name that say things like argued, Commissioner Klug argued, Commissioner Klug this and that. I mean, you're trying purposely to portray me in a light, whereas I'm entitled, as they've told me many times, I'm entitled to my opinion. So for you to choose words... I, I didn't mean it that way. I meant that you were, your point, the, ar the point that you were arguing was this. So we can change it to debate, or, or I don't know if we can even strike it. I didn't mean, I didn't mean it that way. I was trying to put your side. Mm. 
Maybe you can say stated instead of argued. Sure. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. I think it would be clear when um, when Commissioner Wallace, you, you have his explanation of Nylander versus Lincoln County, and it says in the bottom there, the last <clears throat> like three sentences up, which ruled that all elected officials are equals and that the board of commissioners are responsible for approving the budget and that elected officials have discretion over how the budget is spent. I think the clarification there should be that elected officials have sole discretion over their own budget because the way that's worded, it it's just not clear. I think what you were trying to say, Aljo, was that each elected official has sole ownership of his or her own budget and, and discretion over how it is spent. The way that's worded kind of makes it seem like elected officials as a group have discretion over how the budget is spent. And I'm just trying to clarify what you were saying, which is not that all elected officials have discretion over the budget, but that each individual elected official has discretion over his or her funds within their own budget. What if you had each and then there mm -hmm. in front of budget. Mm -hmm. I think that would try to better explain what the opinion was there. Where was um, each, each elected of... official has, so you would, okay. and that each elected official has discretion over, you can say their own budget, and you can strike is spent and how the And that last sentence, Dawn, it's just a grammatical thing, but you have Commissioner Flew argued that due to the fact that the county attorney has control over the spending of her budget and the board cannot control the expenditures, so therefore the county attorney entered into an agreement with herself as owner of O'Hare Law LLC. It's just, that it doesn't read properly. You might want to just say, if you changed it to stated, Commissioner Flew stated the fact that the county attorney, if you put due to, you would have to have a clause on the other side of the sentence that says due to this, therefore that. But the so therefore kind of just isn't in the right place there. It might just be simplified if you take out the due to the, due to the, or that due to. And then you'd technically need a the other two. Okay. You'd also kind of need a semicolon there with the so therefore. What are we changing? Stated to the fact, stated the fact, that due to, take that out. All in agreement? I don't like that. I don't, I don't know that um, that's her opinion, the fact that she has control over them. I think maybe we better take out fact, too stated that the county attorney has control over spending of her budget. All in green? Fine. Uh -huh. Anything else? I have a motion to approve. I move to approve the minutes as corrected. 
I'll second. second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. LaDonna? I just wanted to share the good news that Shirley Gruber donated her vehicle to us, which I think you all already know. So that's all. <laughs> Works fine. We took it to Hayes Thursday. Is there still a, a warranty on part of that? No. no. It, no. Okay. Okay. Is it your intention to just use that one mm -hmm. for the health department? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sell the car? That's what I would like to do. Yeah. Is the car repaired? Um, he was gone last week. It's repaired. It's just the computer needs reprogrammed. I move to produce a thank you note to Shirley Groover on behalf of the commission. Do you have a second? I'll second. Get moved and second. Commission. Give a thank you to Shirley Groover for the donation of her car to the health department. Any questions? No, I don't want to say Aye. Aye. Don, do you want to maybe do good? Yeah, I uh, received a call, I don't know whether it was the day you were in here or the day after you were in here from Shirley asking about the need of a vehicle and that she had one that she was wanting to get rid of. Uh, in our conversation, uh, I suggested that she contact LaDonna and also contact the county attorney so that all the paperwork could be done correctly. Becky uh, Rathburn was kind of the go-between mm -hmm. Shirley and the county, uh, but uh, it worked out very well, I think, and Shirley was very pleased, I think, to do it, and we were very pleased to get it, and we had a good conversation on Friday when I uh, visited her, so. Mm -hmm. And she requested that Al Joe be in the picture, because they're old friends, Thank you very much for coming over and visiting with her and smiling. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. That's all I have this morning. A woman that has worked extremely hard earlier in her life yeah. and has been very gracious with uh, the results of her work, uh, gaining money and property, and very generous to the, to the community. We do. We do appreciate it, I think, very much. Thank you, LaDonna. Thank you, LaDonna. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is yours about the members of the, at the meeting that you're going to election of officers. bills from Mid-America. One deals with state fire marshal stuff we need and I forgot what the other one was. What was our follow-up plan on the um, uh, um, elevator situation? Were you, Don, were you contacting the elevator company that we used to see if they would take um, on the nursing home elevator or? Yes, I will. I haven't. Okay. I talked to the service guy when he was here and he gave me the card to talk. I'm a little preoccupied with other things. No, that's fine. I just didn't know if we were, how we were doing the follow-up. I think he was going to go over and take some pictures to send to the guys. So. Okay. Did you, you said you had next tech out here because of your suspected hacking of your system. Did you have some kind of statement of that so that we can verify that that's happened? Or how are you going to go about that? Um, they're supposed to be some emails are bringing us a proposal here. They're gonna, they assessed our network to see where our weakest spots are, and then they'll bring us a report to let us know. Is that gonna verify whether your suspicions are true? Um, no, 
they they said our system was in, was still intact, although we have had numerous hits onto our system. It, it, apparently, it's like on a daily basis, and um, one department opened up a faux email, and but their computer was so old that they ju we just shut it off, and it hadn't hit our server yet. So, and it was replaced. Okay. Well, I think the the board. Are you in agreement that we should maybe see this report from Next Tech to view what the status is of our network and I server? have assumed I assume that they will suggest more firewalls of some kind, but I don't know that. Well, initially what they told me is, um, and they have sent me a bid for patching, um, that not all the computers are because we are not all on that managed service agreement. Some of the computers are not getting updated like they should be getting updated, so they call it patching is what they call it. And then maybe a little bit more um, better um, antivirus on some of them, even though they take care of all of them, I think maybe they need to upgrade. And uh, Next Tech is working on a new program themselves that will monitor things a little bit differently. The computers that aren't on there are the ones that are too old to be on there, is that correct? Anything that was more than three years old, they would take on, so. And that was part of that plan that we looked at that was too expensive, we couldn't do that they wanted to upgrade those computers ever. Every three years? Yeah, every three years. Yeah. The cost involved was pretty high. Well, the sheriff's department went on that. Did they? Um, I think us and the health department did not, nor the ambulance. But we did install new firewalls at the ambulance and here. And for some reason, I think the health department had a new firewall installed too. So because our firewall was old enough that it was hackable. So. <coughs> And then they also said, too, as part of the thing, that they would set up some, um, like, send us faux emails and see if we click on the links. And then if we click on the links, then they would put us through training. So if that way departments would, you know, start recognizing that not everything is any good. Yeah. same company to clean down at the EMS building as we do at the um, highway department? Do what? The same cleaning company that we talked about last week that does, oh no, I'm sorry, we used that, that, I didn't know what that bill was, that was the John Deere, or the, I'm totally off base, I'm sorry, let me start over. Do we use a cleaning company at all for any of the buildings? We had, no. we had the carpets cleaned at the EMS building last year or so ago, but that was Maybe the only years. cleaning company I think we've ever used. Okay. I said there's John Deere. I meant the port of John. <laughs> the rugs, <laughs> the totally rugs. Don't, do we do rugs still? Do we change out rugs? We don't do that anymore. That service where they come and pick up the rugs. We did, that. Um, we did that one at one time. I think Pete the bought highway department might, but do they have Pete bought his own and then he took down the health department and they're supposed to, we bought our own now. I'm sorry. I was still thinking about that bill we got for the um, the Port -a, Port a Johns that we put out in the yeah. in the different locations, and I was confused about what that company was. So, yeah, I'm sorry. You don't. You already told me they changed <coughs> their name. <coughs> that bill came from the new company. Yeah.
I assume Leanne's bringing a quarterly report to them. Do we have any further updates on what is going to happen between street and street as far as the um, the bid winner for the repairs and then how Johnson and Campbell are going to alter their plans? The last that I knew, they were going to set up a meeting. I between thought, those two I ran, entities? I ran into Mike the other night at the restaurant and he said they hadn't set anything up yet. That was the last I knew they were going to set up a meeting. <clears throat> I don't know if there's been contact between Royce and the engineer or not. I don't. I don't know. I haven't talked to Royce. So. Start with Deborah Mingo Lerner. You have this CD that matures in February of this year that was a 12-month CD, but it's still listed, but there's nothing under the interest statement. Did that just reabsorb? It just didn't get taken off of the report. Oh. 
but where did that money go? under Citizen State Bank. for that from the Children's Health Endowment Fund? No, there's a board. The board, the board does? Mm -hmm. Most generally they apply to LaDonna. Mm -hmm. She called the meeting of the board, I believe. <coughs> she has the application for them. I don't know if you do have any for that, Donna. So I can collect the taxes around about the same. Is that what I'm seeing? I'm sorry, what did you say? Have you uh, talked to the County attorney about a tax sale. I give her a report every September, mm -hmm. and then she decides. decides if there's enough money out there for mm -hmm. the process she has to go through. Yeah. When is the last time we had a tax sale? Oh, probably seven years ago. Eight years. Five, seven years ago. I think they usually try to weigh out whether the costs exceed uh, what they're going to collect. There's a lot of expense involved in advertising. Certified mail. Yeah. Publication. Can we not do our own publication if we wanted to? Yeah, I think there has to be an official county newspaper. So have we seen any rise in CD rates that we could invest? Still? Well, there was a couple published in the newspaper and I called, but that's not for public. Public for government money. Yeah. Yeah. I think based upon the type of tax they are, if it's escaped or added, it tells them how many days that they have to collect the tax. Um, 
my memory serves me right. And a lot of the holdings, when we do add it, it, it will either, you put it in as an escape tax, and then it starts the process, and it just depends on what type of it, if you're adding personal property or real estate, as to whether or not it classifies it as an added or escaped. So these original tax amounts that are listed by department, is that based on what was approved for the 2017 budget? Well, that's more of your question on the abstract. That's based upon the levy. From 2017? Yes. So you take the budget divided by the valuation to get the levy. And trucks, that's personal property and real. Trucks and watercraft are done in a whole other formulary. Trucks are, are a... Like a commercial? Yeah. Well, not no, it's not commercial. It's big farm trucks. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they're taxed at a flat rate that the state does based upon um, average motor vehicle levy. is the same way. I just don't remember what the formula is for it, but it's like down to like 0.05% or something. Yeah. And then it's based upon the average kind of levy as well. Questions from the treasurer? I guess I have some uh, related to this. Uh, driver's license, are we people being able to figure this out? Or? Which part of this? <laughs> we have new equipment. You have new equipment? It's been challenging. It takes probably 10 minutes to load every morning, and it's Challenging. Have the uh, people been bringing their necessary paperwork? Oh, for the real ID. Some do, some are in a time crunch and they choose to just do regular. So, so you, we, so we still have the regular either. available. Mm -hmm. But we try to stress after 2020 you won't be able to fly mm -hmm. if you don't get your real ID. And those that do not get that real ID that are updating them today, can they come in and bring the necessary equipment and then you can, you just basically go in and scan all scan their documents and, 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 and redo then. their license okay. for another $9 charge. <coughs> Ooh, cute. What is the difference between the two? A regular Kansas driver's license is not federally compliant. Okay. Then you have to be, or you have to file for an extension in Kansas has become compliant. So by 2020, you have to have that little star in your driver's license. Okay, it's just an issue with the way that it's formatted on the license. It's not a separate ID. You have to yeah, have a birth certificate, don't you? Okay. Birth certificate, social security card, or first page of your income tax, or something that proves your name and your social security number. If you have a passport, that's great. If you're a woman and you're married, you have to have a marriage license. So, is it going to be a federal mandate to have that if you identification? Want to fly or go into a federal building, or no, 
criteria based, yes. What about voting? That's really that would wrong. solve a lot of problems, wouldn't it? <laughs> What about existing? The people that aren't due to have their upgraded, can they still Or somebody like me that just Till got 2020. last year, um, after 2020, won't be able to apply. And of course, $10. Yes, $9. Yeah. 10 would be a round number. <laughs> you mean they're not going to accept passports? Oh, yeah. If you have a passport, you're fine. Oh, I meant for flying. I mean... Sure, if you have a passport, that's a federal document. I see what you're saying. Okay. If you want to fly without a passport, you have to have a federally approved state ID driver's license. Okay. How long is your passport for? Ten years, I think. Mm -hmm. Typically. I think if you're young, I think if you're under 18, it's less mm -hmm. time for some reason. Yeah. And then also January 1, we're supposed to have a new system for driver's license. But they're going to keep the fail-safe button this time. Did they ever get it fully functioning? Yes, fully functioning. Okay, okay. Else have anything for the end? Thank you, Lynn, for your work, for your reports. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. In traffic things. Uh, Lynn, tell Deborah to come down. Tell Deborah to come down. Don, I didn't get to ask you last week. I forgot. How, what do you do with the mail-in ballots? When they come in, are they just collected and held in a specific container? They go into a ballot box. They do go into a ballot box mm -hmm. and they're just opened on the, on the, the election day. Yeah. Yeah. They'll come in probably around 5, so by the time they get started it'll be 5.30. And the rule of thumb is you have to leave at least three ballots in the ballot box, so they'll start opening ballots up and straightening them. Before so you begin. Mm -hmm. Then you, they check the envelopes to make sure their signatures are on the envelopes and things like that. So Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. Yeah, get your Hello. chair and bring it up here to the table. Oh, I'm right here. I think you're up. Do you, which do you, where do you want to start? Evaluations, performance evaluations, or the insurance numbers? Let's start with the insurance. Um, I can tell you that because I looked on Friday, plan A, there was 51 year old C7Q2N0J1. That's 61, four employees waived, and we still have three open positions. I can't really evaluate mm -hmm. savings at this point because we've had more new employees come, go, so on and such forth. It's going to be a little bit difficult to do that very quickly. Um, but that gives you an idea that some of the employees did choose different options for next year. So, And I didn't have anyone who didn't complete their enrollment, which is very good. So every one of them took the time to take care of it, so it all turned out good. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just pick and we'll do job yep. descriptions next. All right. Um, so, pack it for each of you. Dawn, I think you already have them enough. You've seen them enough. You didn't care about a copy. Okay. As long as you're making changes in your I, I am. Um, I'm, I haven't gotten through everything that the departments have brought back. I asked them all to try to return them around the 1st of November with any changes they would want to see. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of them to go through. The ones I brought you guys were the ones that basically are the individuals that you would be like department heads. Mm -hmm. um, Ambulance director, director of public works. Um, 
Road and Bridge Supervisor, Health Department. Um, appraiser. The appraiser. And Dennis. And, and yes. Now, there's a couple that I'm not sure who's going to do that because we never really got that far at the last mm -hmm. time with the process. Like the custodian and mm -hmm. like the recycling center, they're kind of on their own, but they're kind of not on their own. I don't know who, whether that would be something that you guys would do those. It would be my assumption that you would, so I can bring those as well. So have you made any suggestions uh, some, here? Some of the department heads, because we're mm -hmm. in the middle on of these. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of getting ready for the election, so mm -hmm. I haven't. Yeah. And okay. like I said, most of them just brought them back to me. Um, the sheriff's department, we have to do a new one. I think we're going to have to redo one of the bus ones. Because um, mm -hmm. one of theirs is so old that I don't know that they know where the one is. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. But have you made any corrections? A on few. Uh, on, on the ones you just gave them? Yes, the ones that I gave you, not all of them have been updated based on the department head's recommendations, but some okay. have. Okay, okay. But do you know where the recommendations are that they've done? Nope. Not off the top of my head. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't know whether you had an email. You had noted they email it. You or no, they sit down and they usually go through you. All, all of them and sometimes with their employees and they make corrections. They make recommendations on them in writing. Mm -hmm. I think he's asking you where that is. No, I'm just saying, is that stuff on here? Most of them, I believe so. I don't okay. think there's any that I didn't, but I'm not 100% sure because okay. I have to. But you didn't things. distinguish the changes that. No, the, most of it was. Okay. Um, Taking a couple things out, um, mm -hmm. uh, some rephrasing, like mm -hmm. Terry's looking at the appraiser. It's not, it's called... Orion? Orion. They switched mm -hmm. their oh, yeah. okay. Okay. program to Some Orion, of that kind of stuff. So okay. it was things right. like that. Okay. Um, uh, like when Leanne went through hers, there have been some changes with the state regarding the things that they do now there mm -hmm. compared to what they did before. Okay. So we had to add some things okay. to them. Right. Things like that. Nothing mm -hmm. drastic. Um, okay. Basically, it's... Road and Bridge, we shifted some responsibilities when we went to Public yeah. Works and mm -hmm. whatnot, so there was adding the fact that you brought in the weed department and the, the transfer station. There wasn't major things that changed. I did bring emergency management. Mm -hmm. But I think that, I don't think he made any corrections, or I think his, okay. he thought, looked fine. This one was just on top, so I'm going to use it as an example, but under Ambulance Service Director, it doesn't, I notice it doesn't say if it's full-time, part-time. I don't believe any of them do. If that's a feature that you guys wanted to add in to the descriptions, we could. I think the last one said it was a full-time position. I don't recall. It, there is the potential. Um, I know that it used to say that it was exempt from overtime when it was salary, so I know that we changed that. Because now it's not. State mandated? If they're an hourly employee. Um, but I mean, is that state mandated that they are salary, they don't get overtime? Mm -hmm. No. Being salary does not constitute being exempt from overtime. It's based on the job duties, the job responsibilities, things of that nature. Well, no, I'm saying if that's not state mandated, then that's just up to us. No, it's federally, no, it's federally mandated. mandated. It's federally mandated that if you work more than a 40-hour week, even if you're on salary, you'll get no. compensated for it. Depending time. on what your job responsibilities are. Fair Labor and Standard is the one that sets those guidelines, and there are, there are some exemptions from being exempt from having to pay overtime on, the position, on certain positions, and it's based on their responsibilities and their duties. So you're saying this one says the ambulance service director is a non-exempt yes. position. Because that's why that's hour, stated here. Yes, because he's on an hourly wage, so he would be entitled to overtime. And even if he wasn't, he still would be entitled that's to overtime. That's what I'm asking. No, that's because I'm asking. yeah, because even if he was salary, because he's performing more work than he is administrative. In, in where he is now, yes. The, the way the department is set up now, yes, it would still potentially still be non-exempt. The way that it was a while ago, where the person was predominantly administrative, administrative then there could potentially be that exemption. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the position and what that position is doing, not the person so much. 
I did forget emergency management when I was going through my list of people that you guys would be evaluating. So that one is from right here. I can print it off and bring it down before you guys go today. I would like to make the suggestion that maybe the first Monday of December we go back to this and that each board member bring their own corrections or additions and then we can it would be nice if you would each make your <coughs> kind of what the department has to write on there things that you would like to see and if you could get it to me ahead of time so that I could update it so you had like a finished copy and then you guys could kind of have, have that that would help too I think if we I think you'd have to do three separate yeah I think if we bring yeah. if we bring everything and discuss it say on December 4th then by the end of the month, we still have three more Mondays. For, we'll agree on, or at least two of us, we'll I agree on the corrections, and then... I just don't want to get at the end of the year and be rushed trying to get them done. But I'm saying you, may, you can't just add all three corrections and then we edit, re-edit them. We may as well each edit our own, That's fine. bring them to the I table, just, then give you the copy that we converge all three with. Do you know what I'm saying? I just thought that, I, could we just do it a little sooner? Yes, I think what we I'm, should. my concern. Is I, I don't want to be pressed at the end of the year trying to get uh, a ton of things done all at one time. One after so could you take would, two weeks? I would, I would suggest that we work on them on the 20th, that these be here the 20th. We'll meet on yes. Monday. The next two week weeks. we will be meeting twice on okay. Monday and Thursday. As I was looking at the calendar, my recommendation is that we do not meet the 26th of December, that we just come in on the 29th. Okay. And uh, basically that will be a pounce payable and transfer of funds meeting so we can get out of here. The courthouse will be uh, closed at noon, I assume, won't it? Or we usually That's have been. A, yeah. Normally we close to the public at noon. Yes. Yeah. So, but I would just suggest we come in the 29th. And Th that was my only because could we move yeah. the timetable up a little bit? I just don't so want to I press just, the I don't, here. I guess I don't see any reason coming in the 26th on Tuesday and coming back on Friday because the girls won't have the girls. I'm sorry. The yeah. staff will not have the uh, bills and accounts payable. Thank you. Caught myself, didn't I? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so I'll come back on the 20th and then you guys can have any recommendations. I think, I think we'll we will discuss there. those on the 20th. Yes. Right. I like that. Okay. Um, I scheduling I would time out. I would schedule, um, yeah, I, I would schedule, let's see, we're still meeting at 8, aren't we? Why don't we? Uh, Until, that's why I said the 10, first week of December. 10. If we, can, if we can do this at 10 until we conclude, if we can get the business done before 10, okay. the agenda done before 10, then we can on the 20th. work on this, yes. Would be my suggestion. I know I gave them to you before, but no. for my evaluations, yes. you know, again, I, what are your thoughts? I mean, did you guys look at them at all? Briefly. Yeah, I did. We talked I, one time that you yeah. kind of thought that maybe you'd like to see a little more condensed. Yeah, I would. I would like to see it condensed. My other problem with this is that you know, the budget does not appear to be able to do so, merit raises at a consistent level. So maybe although it's in that, maybe kind of take that part out of the policy? I guess I would, you know, I, I think we need to think about that considerably. The other thing that I think we need to go to is we can... Wait a minute. Did you just say that we're going to take the employee well, evaluation appraisals out of policy? No. No, I didn't. I was talking about the appraisals based, there's merit, based merit, pay, there's, there's merit, there's a page in the policy. There's a page in the policy that has merit on it. We've never been able to totally fund it. You mean our totally existing evaluation it. policy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've never been able to, to fund it, so I'm not sure that that is a... And we never really put... We never put any money. But I, I could... I the would other... Agree. The point I want to make is that I think that three or four pages or however long this is is way too long. Do you want me I to think see? that we can go to more of a, I guess I would call it a checklist, 
and then where at the end we put a summary okay. of maybe uh, goals uh, that we see. I think we need to have a place for the employees also to have goals and we need to have some goals set there. And to me that uh, reflects better than all this uh, writing on each and every thing. Okay. Um, I don't know whether there's anything out there, but I, I do think, I do think, I don't know. Every county has something a little different. Um, um, and I have copies of some of the other counties. I've seen some on the listserv um, email box. Um, do you want me to try to condense it? I guess one thing that, that I, let's just take this okay. page here, Deborah. You okay, see it has, I don't know, okay, you know, there's organization at the top. Okay. Organization, initiative, attendance, interaction with others. To me, that can be a line and we okay. can rate it one, two, through five. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. this information is important. Yes. It needs to be provided to them and for us so what we know what we're looking for, but we don't need Okay. When we get done, all we need is one piece of paper, myself, I think, signed on the back okay. with the employee's signature and with those goals and things. To me, that's much easier. How about taking this points column? It's about two-thirds of the way through. Mm -hmm. And you can apply that scale he was talking about to each one of these headings as a ranking system. And then you don't have okay. to have a written description. I agree with that. You don't need a written description. But because if it's a problem, it's a problem and we should ask about right. it. Right. But if it's a good thing, it's yes. a good thing and it'll okay. be a positive so point. So I'll try to take this and put it more in with this and see what I can come up with. And maybe bring that back well, as well. Right. I'm not sure I'll make it by the 20th, yeah, but right. I'll try to. So then you have something else to take in a look. You know, if, if you're on a one to five scale and just say meeting the public. Mm -hmm. And the person gets a check in the two. He knows that he needs to work on that. I may give some direction mm -hmm. when I talk to him, but to me that's an indication that, that he needs to work on that. If I give him a four, you know, he knows I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing satisfactory work. He thinks I'm meeting the public well, you know. Uh, and things like and that. And like you said, you'd rather like a check system yeah. with some list of yeah. things and then a comment section down below. Yeah. So, okay, we can do that. Yeah. And if I may add, I think it's crucial, like you said, to allow the employee themselves a comment. Oh, I, but I think they should be able to evaluate their own department head because with us meeting once a week and having no direct contact on a regular basis, the only way for us to assess those whom we are in charge of is to ask the, the under personnel. I mean, it, this isn't the same way as a corporation works where it's just trickle down all the way. This is basically an efficiency rating from the bottom up because we are elected to be here. We're not here because we own shares in the corporation. So for us to take into consideration, number one, how the employees feel about their department heads, and also what we should always be doing, which is how the public feels about the general performance, I think it should, it's invaluable that the employees give even themselves a rating and then a section under how they feel the administration is. I mean, I see a lot of tension over basically that trickle-down effect that we have been using, and it's that's not necessarily customary for a public official to be in that role. We should be more on the receiving end of information to make decisions. Yeah, I'll be. We do have um, a section in there, if I may, um, where there is a self-evaluation for both the supervisors and the employees, and it asks, you know, um, things that they like about their job and don't. Asks about their duties. Asks what things they think that what changes and improvements would you like to see implemented, and ask them about. So there is some of that in there. Maybe not in those words, but we do ask the employee when they do that to to tell us what they think could be better. Yes, and I think this self-evaluation chart that's already existing is more like what you were saying mm -hmm. could be the general, right. it doesn't have to be so mm -hmm. cumbersome with um, wording and writing out a whole essay for each section. But I think this should be, you know, you can have two sections. Rate this for yourself, rate this for the administration. And that way we have a comparison. You know, if, you, if you're sitting there saying, well, I'm wonderful at everything and the administration is not good at anything, then that's kind of a that's a wash. But if you have someone who's willing to say, well, I need to work on this, but I'm pretty good at this, and the administration has never done this for me, yet they always do this, then that's a more appropriate way to assess an evaluation. You have to have that comparison 
Otherwise, well, I you're getting just a one sided I, I think that that needs to be in the employee evaluation that he's doing with the supervisor, you know. And we, we can look at those. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we can look at those, but you know, when it, it's going to be just like us sitting down with the department heads, they're going to be doing something, we're going to be doing something, and we're going to compare it. The department heads should be doing that with their employees also. I agree. Yeah. So, so I think that's where we will see that, myself. I don't know that we need to go out and search for the employees, I guess, to, to evaluate their department. I think that's going to be part of the employee evaluation that the department head is doing with those people he's supervising. I see, what, I see what you're saying. But in that scenario, you're not allowing for criticism to circumvent a direct retaliation from the overseeing I don't I don't think I don't think there's I don't think there'd be any difference in me asking them and, and the supervisor asking them. They're going to because they're going to know that I'm going to uh, if they butcher this supervisor, I'm probably going to question the supervisor uh, because of the employee's comments. So I'm, I'm not sure that there's, if you're willing to, to make some criticism, it doesn't matter whether you make it to me or whether you make it to the, the department head, I don't think. Well, I think it absolutely does, because we've seen a recurring issue with this, you know, in, in several situations. I understand what you're saying if you're talking about a chain of command. If you have an issue, you go to your supervisor. If it's not taken care of, you go above them. But we're talking about an evaluation where that person is allowed to objectively say, I don't think this is being handled properly. You're asking them to go to the person who's not handling it properly. I'm saying they're going to do it on the evaluation that they are given prior to their meeting with the supervisor. Yes, I'm not even sure I know how to ask it. Do the department heads know, or this is a new evaluation system, do the department heads and their employees have, know what the requirements are of, do the employees know what the requirements are of the department they have, head? They have, they have job okay. And the department yes. head knows yes. what the requirements are yes. of yes. at the start of employment. Yes. Not necessarily, because we already went over the issue that the current, um, you know, um, in, like the, the current ambulance service director did not have a job description that correlated with his job, and he's been here for two years. He has had a job description that has correlated with his job. There are always things that need to be updated and changes, but every one of the department has, has had a job description. He's had a copy of the job description. Has there ch things changed when he became the director compared to any of the prior ones? Yes, but things change all the time. And the employees under him know his job description. Yeah, well, they should if they don't. Well, well to, be, to be honest, do employees come in all the time and say, did you make any changes? Can I get an updated job description? No, they really don't. The employees know what their job duties are and their responsibility. When a position opens up, we ask the employees to review it. You know, um, we kind of review with them what's changed, uh, what, what, what might we need to add or remove or change compared to what, um, let's say, the health nurse. LaDonna would say, hey, you know, take a look. What's okay, changed? I understand that. The but, department, usually like a personnel handbook, has like what schools would have. They have the job description of the administrator and the job description of, let's say, the teachers or the employees. Yeah, our so handbook everybody doesn't. knows what's on first base. The job descriptions aren't in their handbook. Okay. And I don't know. And I would say, is, when I was a former county employee, no, I did not know what my boss really did. And even, even as I was training for this position, I'm still learning. Every day it's something different. And I... I do employees necessarily know? Probably not. Because they're not the ones who are that job. But they know the overall But it might basis. be helpful for them to kind of have an idea because they might not be as, as critical mm -hmm. if they actually discover what their responsibilities are. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. That yes. Guy isn't doing job yep. And that's why it's important to review them and that's why when we have positions that open up, we, we do that. We look and see what's changed. 
You know, what, what do we need to change? What, ha what are they doing now that they weren't doing before? You know, and, and how can we change it so that the next employee coming in knows what their responsibilities are? I don't think it would hurt to have the employees have the job descriptions prior to their evaluations. We usually hand them out. Well, mm -hmm. we did the one time that we did them, but we haven't done them since. So yes, that would be something that would need to occur. And I thought it was somewhere in the policy, but you know, we did it. I think you guys. I think we did one wave of it, and then it never happened again. Yeah, so we did a part of a wave it, the next time be, too. It's going to be a new thing for the employees to be evaluated, it's becoming, and it's going to be became a new thing. time consuming. Extremely time consuming. It will, but it will be an important thing. Yeah, but it won't be near as much as that, the old ones if we get it changed. Well, thank you, Deb, but we need to move on. Yes, We've I got, got full to, schedule. So. Else to be at nine too, so. Okay, thank you. Say bye, Colin, please. Morning, Michael. Morning. Hello. This is Warmed up, see. Sit down, Bob, there. Yeah. Michael, let me guess the name. Um, Mr. Jeremy Rosebrook is here. Mm -hmm. uh, we visited last week, and I'd like to see if we can come to a solution and okay. get a uh, signed gravel permit ready to go. So okay. if he wanted a few things to visit with you. Yeah. Guys. Morning, Mr. Rosebrook. Morning. How are you? Um, I was talking to Michael. I was just wondering on how, how long it's been since you've raised the rate you paid, but how in the future, if things change just due to inflation and stuff, how is that handled on when you guys decide to raise the rate? Or? Do you remember when we changed that? I don't have the date. It's probably been close to seven years now. Has it been that long? I think Five we looked back seven. and it was like 20, 2010 or 2011. 2010. While you discuss, I can look that. Yeah, it, it's, you know, I think that's one of the things that we look at uh, when uh, surrounding counties start raising the rates. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's one thing we look at. And it became apparent to me, I guess, probably a year ago after uh, listening or visiting with Mitchell County that uh, certainly their price of gravel was much higher than ours. I think they just actually entered into a negotiation last summer, wasn't it? Not this summer, but maybe in her last, may have been 16, I don't know, fall 16 or something. I know with their gravel pit, and I was amazed at the price that they were going to pay, and, and we probably do need, we need to adjust. And I think I've had Michael, he'd been looking at some rates around. So, you know, I, it's probably something we need to look at every two or three years. I mean, you know, uh, as the uh, amount becomes more scarce, price goes up. As we, as we know in the farming business, when there's plenty of grain, it's cheap when there isn't. And we're getting to a point in this county where uh, available gravel, I guess, at a small cost of uncovering is becoming a premium. So, so yeah, I think we will be making an adjustment to the gravel. Would you have been in agreement, I guess, it's going to be awful hard to, for us to make a major change because the budget's already in. Would you be in agreement to doing something on a graduated three-year scale or something like that to get it, you know, up to a... I have a point of clarification. Are, are we talking about a gravel pit where the county had previously contracted with you and there it has expired, but we now have gravel that has been uncovered and is sitting in piles, correct? Okay. You know, the number that you were talking about 2011 would cut our ability to gravel in half for the year that's already budgeted. Yeah. Is what I'm getting at. If we could do it, you know. What are you looking at? Raising to? Did you ever hear anything from Ottawa County? Yes. They do not use any pits. There's only one sand pit in Ottawa County, and it's private. They're hauling out clay center, inch and a quarter redstone, at a cost of eleven twenty-five plus shipping. What was Mitchell County? Eleven twenty-five what? A yard. Inch and a quarter redstone. A yard. A ton. A ton. 
year. What was Mitchell County? Uh, and, uh, They were anywhere from two dollars to three fifty, from sand to gravel. Where was to that? Stone, Mitchell County. A yard. Yes. You were requesting what, Jeremy? Oh, I started out at two and a half. I guess I would say I don't have a problem with two and a half. Like I say, if we could do it over a two year period or whatever, you know, bump it to half this year, half next year. Okay, let me, while we're talking about that, let me ask one more thing. I was wondering if there's any way, and of course if you're graduating it, it'll give the county incentive to get it out, but is there any way to have a minimum pulled out I was curious, like I just like to be able to count on X amount, like two thousand dollars a year, or a mile, or you know what that price. But I realize that causes problems for how many pits you have. I guess I would defer your question to Bob. It's been around the gravel pits. Uh, is there any way that we can? Is that going to be impossible for you guys to? It's going to be pretty hard to set up a guarantee because of whether flood related projects or we may not get to you here and have to go somewhere else or if we're pretty well got roads taken care of in the area for around your pit and we got bad roads somewhere else that may not get taken care of that year might be into the next year but like I said it's pretty hard to say we're going to take a certain a amount. Minimum, of, minimum, minimum. I would say this, the block pit is empty, so I'm sure that's going to increase the amount of gravel going out of your pit, don't you feel? I mean, we all block gravel, you know, sometimes farther than we would have liked to because of the quality of the gravel, and it's gone, so I would say that it's going to increase the amount that comes out of Wolf Creek, your pit, you know. I guess the other thing, Jeremy, I would say, and we, we would need to think about this, uh, is that we maybe could make a minimum payment uh, for gravel and deduct it as we take it out. I mean, you know, uh, say we give you $2,000 this year, but we don't take any out. Uh, we've already paid you 2000 for the gravel, you know, and if we do that every year, you know, because uh, I know some years, such as the Bolte pit out here. I mean, I think that one year we paid her $20,000, didn't we? Because, I mean, we had a lot sure. of projects coming out of that pit. But we haven't paid her probably for a couple of years now, or maybe a year. I don't know. Not you know, that, that's the problem that we have. And I understand you're, you're you know, you don't, that's not a guaranteed income. Mm -hmm. You know, you just never know when it's going to mm -hmm. come. And, and I don't know, we may be able to look at something along that line where we would pay so much a year for so much gravel and then it may be the next year before we pull it out of your pit, you know, because oftentimes when we start pulling gravel out of a pit, it's a considerable amount because we're in that area and we need to do a lot of projects. So. We could certainly look at that, I guess, and, and see how that would, we could budget that in. Yeah, what I would say is when you're getting towards the end of the pit, you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Because then you'll yeah, back if yeah. Have yeah. Them, yeah, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it may be just on pile gravel we can pay so much, you know. We have an estimate of how much pile gravel there is there and, and pay them for the pile gravel or part of the pile gravel. That might be another way to look at it. Well, I can understand how, you know, 20000 this year and nothing for next year. It's a little hard to, to, uh, yeah. eat, to keep it even <clears throat> out. I don't, you know, I don't think they're out of line on the price. Uh, unfortunately, we budget in July for next year, so.
what would your first price be? Well, we're talking about what, well, dollar fifty increase? Dollar now. Half and half. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I was assuming we'd have to do a dollar seventy-five or two dollars probably this first bump. I would guess. I just we're so far out. Of, I guess we're we're, yeah, we're, I, we're out of line quite a ways. I think. Probably. You know, you want to go to another two now, and then we'll bump the other fifty cents next year. I think it would probably behoove us to contract and pay outright for the amount that's there. Because we have contracts we just signed this year expecting those people to stay at that dollar rate for the next three years. I mean, unless you're going to... Oh, gonna, I don't know. No, no, no. We're, we're not going to... We're not going to just change oh, one pit. All no. we did was contract for the pit. We didn't yeah. contract for the... Right. We, can, we can increase the gravel. Now, yeah, I'm we've sure. done that. Well... I would like to see that be reassured instead of just a verbal conversation here because those things tend to disappear around here. Well, I think that's the way we did it last time, wasn't it? When we raised it, we raised it during the middle of the year and everybody got their raise. It's always good. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think we can have one, one rate more than another. I think they have treated everybody fairly, so... Yeah. Whether they... A gravel pit's got a pile in it or it does not have a pile in it, we pay for it when we haul it out. So if we do an adjustment, what's piled there would get the adjusted rate. Yeah. Yeah, the sad thing is it does take a little bit of time to get everything, all the agreements sent out to people, people to get them notarized and to get them turned back in too. So sometimes over 120 days. Well, the only reason I did what I did was just because I've asked before to increase it and it was just this is what it is and I just wanted to kind of have a way to I was curious how the negotiation would be in the future what your what your plan was on how to increase because just through discussions I had it been what 50 cents 75 cents for maybe 10 years and you know it's not necessarily <coughs> keeping up with inflation or I just felt it was worth more than that I, I know I was getting a dollar but the road if it's getting more scarce, it ought to be worth a little more. Not looking to gouge you. But. Yeah. And I guess I would also tell you, Jeremy, this is a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. The more we pay, the more we will ask for taxes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's. I mean, we've got to fund the budget, and when we pay more out. We've got to figure out some way to get it back. You know? I understand. So I, I mean, you know, it's it's a two-way sword, and. Those people that had gravel pits, I guess you would say I have been very generous and contributed to this county probably in the last three or four years, especially significantly, because we have not been paying probably the going rate. So, yeah. And in my opinion, you know, the gravel pits are kind of placed around the county where you're looking at these other counties are having to haul it in and then yeah. distribute it. You still have an advantage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we do. We do have an advantage. Yeah, I think uh, metro counties are in the, actually the western part of the county. And so it is a long haul over into the eastern part of metro county. But metro county only maintains, what, 200 miles of road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's far up too. The rest of them are township roads, so. Yeah. so. Green County is looking for gravel, so the price is going to go up. That's, uh, and that's one of the, the other things is that uh, we need to protect our gravel pits because there is no law that says some other county can't come in and open gravel pits in our county and haul out as they have in Lincoln County before. Mm -hmm. And it has taken a lot of gravel into Winter County. It should have been left, in, that I would like to see left in Lincoln County, but they, you know. So you'd be at a dollar and a half. Per dollar seventy five starting out, and then in a year you're thinking you'd jump it up again, or what? Uh, I, think, I think we'd have to budget. We could budget it in, in eighteen for nineteen because we've already budgeted. Yeah. It. We probably can stand it in eighteen. Make some adjustments. I would guess we just have to. How do you make that assessment without knowing the average amount of gravel that's been hauled over the last four to five years? Well, we know. Michael has. You know. He knows how much. You know. 
I don't personally know. I don't have the right. Right. So I'm asking, how are we negotiating a price right now without having the slightest clue how much gravel has been hauled over in an, in an average season for the past five years? Close to that I'm, I'm sorry. Please let them answer because I, they're the ones making the decision about the money. He normally and, comes in every year and tells us. So based on your long-term experience here, how much money have we been spending and how much gravel have we been hauling out in a, in a given year that you're able to determine the price for next year? I think that we're determining the price for next year because the gravel pit guys are asking for an increase. I ha yes, I, I commend you for coming in and addressing the commission. I'm actually surprised that more haven't. I find it astonishing that one person can come in and make a request and we're all we're automatically considering it when there have been other people come in droves about certain things and we've turned them away. But again, the question is, how do we make I don't think a budget? anyone has come in here and requested an increase in the price of gravel that I remember. No, this is the first time that it's been brought to the commission. There are other issues where people have come in repeatedly but we've ignored. What my question is, how are we going to sit at this table and come to an agreement about a dollar amount right now without having any analytical assessment of how much gravel we've been hauling, how much we may need to haul, and what that's going to cost based on the fact that we've continued to budget $100,000 for gravel and overspent that by 100, 150%. Actually, we the don't budget that years. for gravel. We include times that we have to buy rock from quartzite and other things. No, last year we budget, there was a budget for $100,000 for gravel and we spent 145 And how much of that was rock from quartzite? We didn't spend $145,000 on gravel. I don't believe we did on gravel. Out of the, the funds... I think there was $60,000 in two months, if I remember right, come out of quartzite. But I'm saying that's a decision that you made at this table to do that versus increasing price for our regular gravel pits, which you haven't done for seven but years, you said. The places that they put that rock was to add to the gravel that had been put on the road. That wasn't adequate. Again, without knowing the amount of gravel that we are going to export and potential rock purchases from Quartzsite, how do we make a price negotiation without that information? I think the market is driving this issue. I'm not making a statement that I'm against raising the price for gravel. No, I'm I'm asking, just, you're just asking, and I'm saying the market is driving the issue. So when are we going to take responsibility for the actual budgeting process and know that we are going to budget instead of $100,000 for gravel, $200,000, and at that rate, Times, if we change it to $1.75 or whatever that may be, we will export and distribute exactly, you know, Y amount of yards for the year. How, how come that is not the yard, hard? I don't think the yards of gravel don't vary that much, do they? Oh, well, it can from year to year. This year, we didn't haul Well, that's because we had all the flood stuff. But in a normal year, you're going to haul close to the same amount of gravel it's every year. Very similar. And what I'm telling you is I'm not, without those numbers in front of us, I'm not comfortable with you negotiating a price, is all that I'm saying. It, it's not, it's not even logical. Which I'm willing to negotiate, just uh, for the record, on, on my part as a commissioner. But I, I well, feel for that... for one thing, that's kind of what I was getting at doing it over two years, because this year's already been budgeted, so... It's going to reduce the amount of yardage we can haul, probably. Maybe not. Depends on how much quartzite rock we have to buy to go along with the gravel. That's, you know, when you start talking about, what, 10 bucks a yard? For rock, nine something. Probably a little bit more than that. You know, when you start having to add rock to it, you know. The expense goes up. Yeah. I understand. You know, when you're paying four times as much for rock as you are for gravel, This is precisely why I have asked for reports from the highway department for us to be able to say, okay, so over the last five years, we've hauled exactly, you know, 100 to 150 
thousand dollars worth of gravel which has at a dollar has been Y amount of yardage and we expect to do the same next year or we're planning not to do that next year. You know, we're, we approved a budget where we basically are expecting to spend the same amount of money on gravel next year as we did last year. It's been $100,000 on your, on your gravel line item budget for what, four or five years? Yes, because that's the maximum amount that we can haul when the weather allows us to haul it. That is why. You know, unless we want to haul more gravel, that means that we hire outside trucking source or we buy more trucks and employ some more employees to achieve more gravel than what we can normally haul in a typical year. That is why the number is set where it is set. But that's based on a dollar a yard is what I'm getting that's at. That's correct. So until you do the calculations to know what your maximum would be at $2 a yard, you can't negotiate a price is what I'm saying. You would have to know that. If $100,000 every year is the maximum you can haul, you'd have to know how many yards you're hauling in a given season. And that 100000 you run out of money, you stop. I guess I mean, I'm confused. You know what I'm saying? It looks to me. It looks to me like we're paying a dollar now. We're going to go to two dollars, so we're going to buy half as much gravel as we did before. Exactly, which is a problem because we've already said that we haven't been putting enough gravel on. So that's a catch twenty-two that you just said. If we're only going, if we're going to be paying twice as much and only haul half as much because it's twice as expensive, then where's the gravel going to go? We don't even have a plan for where it goes now. And I think we've tried to explain that it depends on how much rock we have. Rock is what makes the difference. From what I've seen, and I haven't gone much further back, mm -hmm. we've the past two years we've spent about fifty thousand dollars on rock on quartzite. In addition to whatever we've spent on gravel, has that been a trend in the past before, prior to the these last two years? No. No. So that's a new purchase. Well, you know, we always use some. You put gravel down, and it's not adequate. You've got to go in and add rock to it to make it adequate, right? So how much do we have stockpiled from the last purchase we did from Quartzsite a few months ago? No, I'm not exactly sure what's there. I'd have to measure the pile. There's so we purchased that left. because they offered us a deal on it. And we knew at some point we were going to be hauling it. So. I could be mistaken, but I'm sitting here looking at what we paid APAC, and we paid APAC far more than $50,000 last year. Well, yeah, that also will be chip seal and stuff mm -hmm. like that. No, because the chip seal comes up with something different. This is gravel. Okay. This is gravel, rock, and sand. Because the chip seal comes out of chip seal. It Why should. Them, right? Have we answered your questions? Can we make a decision? I think so. We'll make it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. What else you got, Michael? I have uh, received uh, bids back for the uh, Highland Lake Dam inspection. Um, I submitted to three engineering firms. One is uh, Booker Willis Ratcliffe, I believe, out of Salina, uh, Schwab Eaton out of Beloit, and Kirk and Michael out of Ellsworth. And there were two companies that responded. How often did you say that this dam has to be reinspected? They wanted someone assigned to it? Every three years.
that DWR out of stock you know, that we were dealing with. What's that? DWR out of Stockton's we were dealing with. Um, essentially, yes. Leonard Bristow. So we have Schwab Eaton at $1,800 and Kirkham and Michael at $1,500 to perform what you're expecting is the same task, to report, prepare the report, to do, do the inspection and prepare the report to the state. Did you ever visit with um, Kirkham and Michael to ask them if that was something that they would do as part of a contracted monthly? No, all that stuff comes separate. Anything as far as doing permits, inspections, stuff like that comes extra at an hourly charge, even if you were doing uh, the monthly contract. The inspection and the report would come as a separate In fee. Addition to, yes. Okay. That's not one of the services that would be allowable with that. So, I move to accept the bid from Kirkman Michael for the state mandated inspection on. Dam DLC zero triple one. Do I have a second? I'll second. Then moved and second. Is this a one time deal, Mike, or are we going to? Three years. But, this but the fun. price will yes. be negotiated each time. This is for the initial. If you so choose to have it be bid, huh? if you so choose to have that bid, typically, uh, a uh, simple inspection does not typically get put out to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this was a first time deal. In quite a while, yes. Yes. I have we had you know, are we aware have we ever had to have another um oh, we did it in two thousand and John Cash. Oh we needed a price on for for one thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. What else you got, Michael? That's all I have this week. That's all I have this week. Uh, Bob, I ran into Roger Nitch yesterday, and he told me that uh, Wheat Drive, which is a uh, mile north of the Bethany Church and west, past where Eric Nitch used to live, well, I think it's that first mile, though, he said going up that hill, the, the gravel is gone, the dirt, dirt, so... I told him I would mention it to you to put it on your list. Yeah, as soon as they finish where they're at, they're heading up in that area. Okay. Do something for Rick's territory up in there. Yeah, Richard, or Roger said it was getting pretty bad through that mile. I hadn't been up there for quite a while. But, uh, yeah, I know there is pretty much right there several spots in there. Mm -hmm. Get it pretty thin. Yeah. yeah. You have anything, Bob? Uh, I'd say we just they're working on that bridge up there, four seventy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, get out here, have a gal lease agreement here. Um, uh, so I had been up there. We haven't been in there for a long time, and he would like to. There's still some pile in there that we never hold out over the years, and he would like to kind of clean that up if we could, and he'd like to do a little more looking around if we could find some more in there. So he got this green sign with it. He brought it in the other day.
So where where is that where is that going to be? Uh, it'll be over there off. I see. Thirtieth. Thirtieth there. Yeah. Sylvan back there. Be about a mile. Well, two miles south of Meyer Speedlock. There. This is a pre-existing one. It was. A, they haven't hauled anything in. I don't know when. Not since I've worked here, it hasn't been used. No, not the last, like I said, shortly before I retired, before it was the last I remember hauling out, and I didn't know whether there was any haul out after that or not. He what? said there's still a pile in there, and he'd like to kind of clean it up so he could put a fence or something in there. And we haven't had an agreement with them uh, for several years. That was thing. Yeah. So the agreement would be new. It's an old pit that they were in years ago. But so, I mean, let's talk price then. What what are we going to begin to do? Because if this is potentially being used, you know, we're at the end of the year, what are we going to do for 2018? If we have $100,000 in the budget and we're going to up the price to $2 a yard, that means we can haul 50,000 cubic yards of gravel, which is half as much as what he says our maximum potential of hauling is, which we didn't reach this year regardless, correct? Correct. Do you know how many total yards we've hauled to this point? No, I don't have that total with me. Is that something that's in any of your reports from the line items under their budget? I can look in the line items, but there will be a rock in it. From Quartzite. Do you know what the total was from Quartzite so that we can deduct that? Well, I think we can sign the agreement and then adjust the rate whenever we adjust the rate. Yeah. That's what we have to do no matter what. Yeah, we're going to do that on all of our pits. We're just going to adjust the rate, notifying that we're adjusting the rate. We have a motion to enter into an agreement with Ed Ladd Revocable Trust and Mildred Ladd Revocable Trust. I move. Do I have a second? Enter into a grab agreement with Ed Ladd Revocable Trust. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion? My, my discussion would be when are we going to come to a conclusion about how we're going to calculate the price. Who's going to do the math? Who's going to provide the analysis? I think Michael has the records about that, how much gravel we've all he can provide that to us. In the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Anything else, Bob? Uh, I'd say I guess nothing other than just normal maintenance here. We've been doing some gravel, and I'd say. And every West Fall area, and we're going to shit finish up today, and we'll be moving up that corner of the county. Where are we hauling from down south? Line? How bolty? Yeah, that's about all we've got down there right now until we get some pile. Rose up there. So. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same with. Lads here, if we've got an opportunity there, all we have is the Wolf Creek deal up there now, so until mm -hmm. we find something out at other locations. Mm -hmm. That's about all I have, I guess. Thank you. Okay. For your time today, guys. Thank you, guys. I got two thank yous for you. One was the gravel on 30th that's been spread along there in that southern section, and um, Vesper Road, 120th, down where we talked about last time, south where that little lump was. I got a call that said there was some work done on it, so thank you. Okay. Have a great week. You bet. Bye-bye. Larry? You're up, Larry. Do we have people out in the hall? I mean, it's kind of our obligation to accommodate well, I think they're using the room. standing room They're using the room downstairs, aren't they? There's someone downstairs. There was something going on there earlier in here. Yes. You bet, Larry. I appreciate it. I'm going to be very brought the, brought the check, didn't you? What's that? You brought a check, didn't you? Bought cash. Oh, okay. cash. That's better. That's better. <laughs> that's, that's better. You, that's what you told me to bring. I <laughs> Is that what I told you? Okay. <laughs>
I didn't like your rubber checks. <laughs> I'm not going to be very long. I've sort of got a cold. I don't want to pass this on. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't want you, I don't want you sharing yeah. either. And, and so I'm just going to uh, briefly here give just a very brief update. I believe uh, our CEO was by here earlier this year, wasn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was here, but yeah. Yeah. Didn't, didn't he bring a check? Yeah. yeah. He brought Somebody a brought a check. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Somebody brought a check. Well, all this is is just an update on your okay. insurance usage. I just all want right. to mention a couple of things. Mm -hmm. And I'm Larry Sharp. With, uh, Alexis Wood. Nice to meet you. Okay, Camp Insurance. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with us or not. We, we uh, provide here all the insurance in uh, Lincoln County, except for your <laughs> health insurance and workers' comp. So we cover everything from property uh, to casualty, like tornadoes, fires, and such as that. And then we cover your uh, liability also. Uh, and so it's part and parcel of that channel. We do offer a lot, of, a lot of services here. These are our primary risk management services. And at the top here, commissioners, I see that you we have this, what we call attorney assist, and this is, you know, a, um, one of our oldest risk management services. This is where we offer up what we consider expert legal advice uh, is from our contract attorneys that uh, specialize in county litigation and county liability matters. And it seems like you've made quite a few calls, which is good, I think. Because, you know, you like to try to stay proactive. Uh, so, so far this year, we've had 35 contacts here with Lincoln County. Uh, 2016, it was 24. 2015, it was 15. And 2014, it was 26. Generally, the people that call these attorneys, uh, our insurance attorneys, are generally the county clerk, uh, the sheriff, public works, and sometimes commissioners do too, and your county counselor, or the county attorney. The risk avoidance grant, you've used the $2,000 that we've set aside here um, for Lincoln County. And I do have to give some uh, kudos to Lincoln County because out of all of our counties that are members here that we provide the insurance for, which we have 70 counties, uh, Lincoln County and two others have consistently utilized or used this money every year, which is I think hopefully citizens appreciate that because really it's your money. You know, you pay your premiums every year, uh, and then you know this is one way that we bring back money in to you. Each county we take two thousand dollars, we set it aside, we give it back to you if you use it for risk mitigation. I think here the sheriff has been a big user of that, and most most counties that that is uh, usually the. Uh, department that usually, usually utilizes this risk avoidance grant. The second second most used, uh, uh, or the second department that uses this grant the most would be the public works or, you know, Logan Bridge there. Uh, and K uh, we have the, you know, college training is real big now on the internet. And so, therefore, you know, we've jumped into this. We offer internet insurance courses, uh, and I see that your health department has taken 10 courses here, uh, 2014. And so, you know, that's that's what they're there for. Um, the law enforcement tuition reimbursement is one of our large uh, risk management uh, uh, programs. And really, it's just what it is. It's a tuition grant that we give to our sheriff and the deputies uh, for Lincoln County. Uh, we raised that tuition grant up to $1,000 for this year. So every year, uh, if the sheriff or one of the deputies takes a course that is germane to insurance liability primarily, and there's a tuition cost associated with that, we will reimburse you for that. And as we, as we know, the, the sheriff and, the, and his deputies have to have 40 hours per year of continuing ed. So usually you can probably pretty, pretty easily utilize this because a lot of their training they go to, even though the majority of it is free, 
uh, generally. Will you pay that expense, the mileage and? No, it's just, just it's just tuition, it's right? just a, it's, it's just the registration. If there's a registration fee, and so when he goes, he has to go to Hayes to take a special firearms course. And I said there'd be a fifty volt, fifty dollar, you know, registration. We'll reimburse for that. And the last one here is a road scholar. It's a lower, it's a, it's a program that we offer. It's similar to the same thing as law enforcement, except for it's road and bridge. They take some KDOT courses, and there's a two tuition uh, cost to that or a registration cost will reimburse you for that too. Uh, and that's it, commissioners. Uh, I, I hate to be brief, but I don't want to make anyone, I don't know if I got allergy or if I got a cold. I think you can see my eye. I haven't been crying because I, because I thought I was coming here. It's just I can't stop my eyes from watering. <laughs> and so generally I try to take more time than this, but I know that you've got some issues that you're talking about. Uh, any questions, Commissioner, with respect to, oh, on the attorney assist, I forgot to mention, usually most of the calls have to do with liability and specifically errors and omissions, which is employment practice, you know. And so I know oftentimes the clerk calls quite a bit because uh, most counties are, are small, rural counties, and the county clerk is also sort of the ad, ad hoc human resource person. So they take a lot of applications and have a lot of questions. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Anyone going to be up in Kansas City next week? A lot this is going. Is that right? You're going to the business meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I look forward to seeing you there. Right. Just vote no on everything. That's what I would say. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Thanks. Take care. <laughs> Including your wage increase, Larry. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Including your wage increase. Except for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, as we talked about here a couple weeks ago, I got it, thank you. I would like to see the older minutes be put on the website. I know that that's not going to happen immediately, but I would also like to see the maps updated, and we already made that motion. Not updated, but added to the website. Um, Don, is that something that you plan to do, put the maps on there after this election is, has settled? Potentially. Terry and I have visited, um, I actually kind of like Dickinson County's maps, just because they're a little bit, I don't know, so I just don't know if she can do something like that. So where we actually have, um, basically they have like one big county map and then they have all of the um, different districts. Yeah, they have the districts found, drawn out and then they have like different designs to line out what the member districts are and color coded between the school districts because there's, there's more than just two school districts in our county. There's four. And our school districts also don't follow the county lines. Mm -hmm. So you have Mitchell County, you have Osborne County, and Russell County, and you have to be able to get those maps from those other counties to, to make them up. So it's, it's not as simple as just throwing a map out there. And um, that's why I've been hesitant to, to put out what I've had is because it's not very clear and it's it's understandable to me who I work with it every day but it's not understandable to the general public and so um, we've kind of visited a little bit and I'm just not sure what Terry's capable of doing and what she's not and what she has time to help me with but I kind of like Dickinson County's maps and they had like different links where you could link to the map or you could link to a PDF mm -hmm. um, well, I think that would be a great improvement for our website and, and helpful because I've gotten a lot of feedback about people's confusion, you know, as far as how, how things are set up. And just to know that when you go in, you know, what what your township is, what your... You know, even, what even theirs is a little confusing because it took me a while to figure out what all the dashes and slashes were. And then, they, then it dawned on me that they were color coding the school districts. And so even though this, the school districts may have had like member one and member one was all slashed, then they were like differentiated between colors. And I'm still not sure that's not going to confuse the holy heck out of people. But 
Well, I would say something's better than nothing at this point. I mean, at least it gives them something to base questions off of. Um, it, it just, I feel like an individual has a responsibility to, to vote, but if they have a, something to look at to do their own personal comparison to know, oh, okay, this is where I live, this is what my district is, maybe this, you know. For example, I had asked you about um, someone who said that their uh, registration card didn't list the right district whenever they went in to actually vote, and it was some kind of an error, but how can they possibly assess that without having something to go off of that everybody can look at and say, this is the map? You know, I think it's important. Most of the time what happens is when a voter goes in and they get a ballot and they start looking at it and they realize that they thought they should be voting on something else, they'll ask the election board workers. And it's not as easy with the, with the um, electronic machines because they have to ask before they press confirm and send the ballot through. But a lot of them will ask and a lot of it is, is that, that they're wanting to vote on the person, not on the race and they don't realize that they're not within the district. I mean, we had a lot of people that wanted to vote on your race, for example, that was not in your race in the election. So you had a lot of people that were asking for that. So, um. Okay, so the maps are one thing, and I um, I would like to see us put the, the old minutes up, you know, as, as far as, Years back, I don't know if you've looked at maybe Ottawa County's website, but for at least a decade, you know, you can just click on the year. And I understand that's a lot of scanning. Well, but the past 10 years, well, since we've had the website, are probably there. We still need to convert them, though, from a Word to a PDF, so we'll have to. So. Because you have features, they call it hiding them on the website, so we don't actually remove them, so that if somebody would um, actually Google them, they can still access the document, but they're, on, they're in Word right now, so. Okay, we well, I, convert. so you want to put them into PDF? Yeah, that okay. way people don't open them up in their Word documents and take modify them and take them down to the restaurant and lay them on the counter. So and how many years back do we have them like that, I, that you're saying? I don't know. Anything prior to that would have to be scanned in. Um, anything prior to when we have a computer. I think I have... I have... Hang on one second. Hannah was adding some of those. I have... Yeah, I have from 2008 current. Everything else would have to be scanned. Well, I think that might be a good place to start, just with what you already have, you know, on, in electronic format. So, um, I move to include the minutes dating back to 2008 on the public website. They're not there now, Don. Oh, do I have a second? Yeah. I'll second. Are they there, Don, now, or they just need converted? Um, well, they're hidden. I don't know what year is hidden, you know, when we started adding them to the website, because I don't even know how long we've had the website, but um, they'll have to be converted to a PDF because, you know, I didn't even think about it, and we tried to figure out how to put read-only on, but we can't. Can't get it to work. So, mm -hmm. any other questions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. Motion carried. Out of curiosity, why would we be opposed to that? They're already there. Why do we need a motion? All she has to do is convert them. I don't, I don't see the purpose of making a motion. She's doing working on it at her time, so I didn't think it was a necessary motion. Do you have anything else? Um, yeah, I wondered, um, Terry, did you want to update us on the Council on Aging? We had talked about that, the meeting that I had to attend over the phone. We had talked about it because you and I both went two meetings ago. And you kind of gave an update then, and I didn't go to the next one, and you did. So do you want to give us an update? Uh, I don't know if anything was, anything was actually decided 
indefinitely, but there was discussion about the calling of the changing of the date of the meetings and and there was discussion about the, the meeting that was held in the afternoon instead of the morning. Uh, I think they they did have an exec to discuss some things. Uh, I don't think I think they're going to work on some. I don't know. I don't want to call them policies, but they're going to work on. I guess you could call it a policy for changing the meeting dates and, and stuff like that. But I can't talk, you know, I can't discuss what we discussed in the executive session. But. Okay. But there was discussion. Um, but it's, there my was nothing it's, but. it's my understanding that they voted to not have an audit. That prior this year, they all voted to have an audit. I don't know if it was unanimous, but they voted to have an audit. And so about, I don't know, months have gone by now with no audit. And then they voted again this past meeting to not do an audit. I think the... They rescinded, they rescinded, the, motion. They rescinded the motion to yeah. do an I audit. I think what, what prompted that was that they thought the senior senators go to like Jean Brangle, correct? And she looks over their stuff and... To the city, which is quite gross, yeah. Where to do an actual audit, you would have to hire someone. I know Mike cracky has been looking for someone, and a lot of firms won't do an audit on public money. And I think the the estimated cost of it is why they rescinded the motion to do it. I think. I think that they. I think. I th think they're all in favor of having someone look at it. It's just finding someone that's not maybe a certified auditor that's going to cost three or four thousand dollars. It was my understanding they weren't even able to obtain a bid, so I'm not sure that cost had anything to do with the discussion. Well, I think they were talking about by the hour, weren't they? They were going to they wanted to charge by the hour, and there was no. Well, there was a company that was interested in doing the audit, but they needed to get the budget from Teresa, and she refused to give the budget, so they could not charge, they didn't know what to charge, because they, they well, I'm go, sure Mike had the they, budget. they go on by what the uh, 501c3 monies are. I think Mike had the budget, I'm pretty sure. I don't think it was a budget, I think it was a balance sheet. Well, and there were two things required, yeah. and it was only one thing given. And the other was refused, and at that time, they didn't give it. They just kind of took back the motion. But I think that was the cost, is what they were, which I would agree with a certain extent. It's too bad that the firms won't, don't want to do a public entity, and the ones that do are going to charge for it. So. Well, there are definitely firms out there, accounting firms, that are certified to do accounting audits on public, and I mean, we. We, we have one ourselves on the county every year, so I'm not sure why that Mike's would be. Mike's a considerable amount of time looking for one before he finally found a firm that was even interested at all. So there is a firm that's interested, and they ask for, for and they ask for financial information from the Council on Aging in order to give a bid on the, on the actual audit, but that financial information was withheld and therefore now there's no audit and they Mike rescinded told, the motion Mike to get the audit. Mike told me that he asked for the information and he received it, what Mike told me. He received part of it, half of it. Well, there's two different he's, things. That he told me on, I believe it was a Friday, that he had received one of them and then he told me on a Monday that he had received the other one. That's what he told me. Well, it was my understanding from the outcome of that meeting that that the full information wasn't provided in order to get the actual bid from the company who was willing to give a bid on it. Mike told me uh, that he got that. At, That's all right. At the meeting, Teresa said that she only gave the information that she gives to the commissioners. That's the only information she wanted to get out. At the last meeting? That's what she said? I don't, I don't recall her saying that, but Cindy said she did. I'm not going to say she did not say that. So when was the last time that this agency or council or whatever you want to call it had an audit? Never. 
They've never had an audit. They've had people look at it. They've, they've chosen people on the board to look at it. Well, I think. I think we used to audit them. Yeah. I think that they were part of in Soil Conservation Council and Aging. The county used to pay to have the audit done. When was that? that? It's it's been a long time because I don't think it's been since I've been clerk. Oh, I think prior to so the boards decided that it was not worth the extra money. Okay, so we're. So we're giving up to two mills to an organization that hasn't had an audit in two decades, is what I'm hearing. They've had, people have looked at the books, it just hasn't been an official That's audit. not an audit, Terry, and you know that. Mm -hmm. people, people looking at the books, I'm, I'm a little told that you didn't say a that. A financial person looking through the, in, the uh, receives and the and the spends is somewhat of an audit. Mm -hmm. If there's something there that I mean, I don't know what you people are digging for, but there's receipts, there's checks, there's all that's there. Oh, you've seen all this stuff. It goes through there about every month. That lists out the checks. I'm not digging for anything, as you inferred. I'm simply saying that we should be uncomfortable at this table giving money to an organization that refuses an audit on itself. A professional There has been other audit. counties asked for the agency just recently in the last few months. Saline so County yes. actually yes. had a large uh, qualm over their Council on Aging not having audits. I think we should follow up on that. I think in order to receive the next year's budgeted amount, they should be required to provide us an audit. It is expensive to have an audit. Yeah, I mean, I don't see, I just don't see it. Spending that kind of money. That's the only way to know if money is missing or is not there or can, can squelch any rumor mongering that may or may not be accurate. Well, and the fact that they didn't even get their full two mills for the next budgeting year because they have a savings account, there should not be a money issue at all. The money's there to spend to make sure that audit is performed. It's not that the money's not there. Is it that is that beneficial to spend the money on it? Absolutely. That's it's called accountability. So you're saying that you would prefer that the county not be audited every year because we have to pay for it because it's not beneficial? No, I'm not saying that. So it, that's, it, there's a correlation there for you saying that if, it, if that applies to a situation where it's public money. The senior centers then because they get money from the council on aging? I, I think they've had audits. I'm not sure actually to say I when the last they've one. they've had full blown audits. I'm not well, sure when the last one. That was what was retorted that, that Teresa said if you're, if you're going to audit me, then you senior centers are going to have to have an audit too. Well, I mean, there's no problem with I'm that. Not making, this may I'm not be a making, personnel issue and not an audit issue. I don't want to go there. I'm not, making, I'm not making a rep recommendation that senior centers get audited because I think there's three audits going to take place there yeah, at several thousand dollars a piece. And audit may show that a senior center needs to be audited. Well, I don't know if they want to be audited. Well, when I brought this up months and months ago about third-party solicitors and what we expect from them when we give them tax dollars, I had said one of the things that we need to expect is an audit and an annual reports. And you said, oh, no, no, they already do all that stuff and, and we don't need to, to oversee that or, or make it a duplicate issue. But now, here we are at the end of the year seeing that these, place, these places where our money is going, these organizations, they don't self-regulate at all. In fact, they're making decisions blatantly to not have any oversight, any you know fiduciary responsibility to the transparency of their tax dollars. And I can tell you right now, I personally as a citizen have requested financial information that was rejected to me from the Council on Aging. And as a nonprofit organization, they can attempt to claim, you know, independence all they want, but the fact of the matter is they're 100% subsidized by tax money. They're not just receiving a grant for, from us. They're 100% subsidized, which means they do have to give up their, their financial information. But we have bigger fish to fry on the county level, so I haven't ever pushed that issue, but I'm bringing it up now because I'm very concerned to learn that we're giving money and we're 
we're creating an extra tax that the people voted on themselves to self-impose. And then we're not requiring any follow-up and any accountability. idea of the meetings being held at different times, there was supposed to be notice for members and council members, and there were four people that were not notified of the change, uh, which was a coma violation, which the county attorney passed out information at the last meeting in packets. It wasn't brought, should have been brought to the meeting that that's what that was, but it was kind of like, I think we'll they're, read it and <clears throat> talk about it next month. Yeah, they, wanted, they, wanted, they had just got them, some of them, and they wanted the opportunity to review them. It's my understanding that this is the second that. time that the county attorney has been asked to intervene with this group and tell them how or how not to proceed with things. And, you know, that's a concern. Now, Alexis, there are a lot of things that could be considered improper. I mean, the Sylvan Senior <laughs> Center made an attorney payment back in March for an attorney that was handling the civil suit no, they for didn't. some people over there. No, they didn't. Excuse me. Believe I can prove it to you here. Are you are you saying there was a motion to do that? Yes, there was. Did a payment ever take place? No. There was a motion to do it, and the next month there was a thank you letter. There was never a payment on that. That was discussed as being improper, and I can personally attest to that because my personal finances were involved with that. I and know there they was, were. There was never, ever a payment made for Not the only that, center. but there were also a couple of people involved in it on the board of the senior center. Are you saying that the motion was made? Yes. Yeah, it was. And I'm telling you that that payment never happened. Well, I don't know whether it happened or not. I'm just saying the motion well, was made be, and it was approved. Then you should be extra concerned about an audit right now. That should really have your eyeballs open about needing an audit then, because then you can find out if that ever happened. I think it's their money. If that's what they choose to do with it, whether it's proper or legal, I think that was their decision. So you so just said... all kinds of things that can turn up in an audit. Verbatim, you just said, I think it's their money and they can do what they choose with it. Whether it's legal or proper, that's their decision. I can't control them. I can't say you can't give money to that. You can come back after the fact and say that. Clear up a lot of these things. It's a simple solution. Just one. It's a normal solution in the professional world. And whether real levy is being used one way or the other is a good question to ask. 501c3's money is public, whether it's mill levy money or what they call private money, it's a 501c3. Then state. why is financial information being withheld then? If you know that, like you just said, which is true. Mike right. Crafty he told me he had the deals. That's what he told me. Well, we can call Mike right he called me on Friday and told me he got received one of them. He called me a day or two later and told me that he had received the other one. I guess maybe it's a text message. I don't remember if it's a phone call or a text message. But. At the public meeting that we were both in attendance to, she said that she did not have to give the other information, that the information would be at the commissioners. So the people in attendance really were left. But that's not the information that was needed. It was my understanding that the firm wasn't, the auditing firm wasn't <laughs> going to give the bid unless there was a balance sheet and a profit and loss statement. Correct. Those were the two things they needed. And I know that we do not receive as the county a balance sheet or a profit and loss because I questioned that. And Don, you told me that all she had to do was turn in a report of general expenses that wasn't even itemized. No, it was not itemized. And I asked her for the items and never received it. So there's another person that has requested that financial information. It has yet to be provided. I mean, it's ultimately our responsibility, you know, you can say, Terry, that it's their money, but it's not. It came from the taxpayers. No, I said they, it's, they have the money. They can spend it. I can't stop them. I can come back after the fact and do something, but I can't stop them from spending the money on something. Well, You don't have the right to go sit in their meeting and void a check that they write. 
No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that this goes back to my previous discussions with you about how to hold third-party solicitors accountable to the money that we give them. If we require certain things up front before that money is given, then we can safely know that that money which has been distributed has a history of being spent properly, and we don't have to hear all of these discrepancies, especially with a local organization. We're not even talking about the things that may, ha may or may not happen with these organizations that we're funding in Salina, for example. <coughs> I mean, are you can, can I say something? Yeah! You know what I hear about all this today? What I see the problem is, is that these dis discrepancies with this, that, that as soon as the com commission could could eliminate, shut down the bill levy for the, the, yeah, for the agent and put it to the road department for the gravel, we would have a lot better, better uh, run county we would have better roads, and uh, the elderly at these centers and the council would use the money that they got, take care of themselves. When things got down to where they were really begging for money and they needed it, you could start the program up again. I'd say eliminate it and put it to gravel. My well, opinion. Howard, I think if you had your choice, you'd eliminate everything and put it to gravel. I'd eliminate quite a few things. <laughs> but I would, but the, the problem of really cutting down on the amount of gravel is going to be detrimental to the transportation in the county, though. Right. And this this bickering over who's spending what money for, I think that need to focus on what the county really needs to do. They need to work on those roads. Yeah, that That's solve, my opinion. That doesn't opinion. solve the question at hand, though, is how monies already have been utilized and who they have gone to to help, which was a decision made in the past to go for seniors in this county, all seniors, not seniors living in a certain part of the county. Okay, anything else? <laughs> this, move on. Anything else to come before this commission today? So are you willing to require an audit before distributing tax dollars? I'd like to see a, I'd like to see a cost of the audit. No, you just got done saying that you're not interested in micromanaging their finances at their meetings, but now you want to know the cost, and you, you can't just come out and say that you think an audit would be a good idea. You just said the money is in the bank. We just had this discussion. You said money is not an issue. I told you they have a savings account built up. That's why we did But Howard approve. wants to use the audit money for gravel. Well, we can't because the the, the, the public vote <laughs> he was... Be letting the public vote was specific to those two mills going... To actually, it says service programs. It, it doesn't say that it has to go to the council at all. It's just that that council is who solicited for the actual public vote to happen. So and it may be a personnel issue. It may be that might be what your audit finds out. Just saying. Is there anything else come before this board? I move to require an audit. report from the Lincoln County Council on Aging prior to distributing any further mill levy due to the fact that that's a long motion We are unaware of any previous audit on this organization. Do I have a second? The motion will die for lack of second. Do I have anything else before I adjourn this meeting? Um, yes, I just wanted to restate that in the minutes as it described last week, Aljo, you and I have a difference of opinion on what the statutes mean that relate to our elected officials creating contracts or making payments out of their own um, funds, their own budgets. And I don't think it's appropriate to rely on my opinion. I don't think it's appropriate to rely on your opinion. Terry didn't give an opinion. I would suggest that we find an opinion, which is, that's not a matter of you know, um, it's not a matter of accusing someone, it's a matter of clarification. And if we don't do that, 
we are continually opening ourselves up to these types of accusations. And while that makes you feel uncomfortable, as is obvious in the past, I think the only way to truly combat that is to bring it to light and settle it. So if you're confident that there's not a problem with the way Lincoln County has been doing these things and has certain contracts, then why wouldn't we just affirm that with an actual legal, you know, reliable source? I asked the county attorney myself, and she did not want to give an opinion. So that's protocol, you know, going through the chain of command. I did that before it ever even came up at the commission table. I gave her the benefit of primary contact. So the next thing that we should do, and if you're sure of yourself, I don't see why you would have a problem with it, is to seek that attorney general opinion. Are you willing to do that? No, I'm not going to vote for a motion to do that. So if that's your question, no, I won't vote for it. Okay, I move to request attorney general opinion on Lincoln County's compliance with KSA 75-4301A and KSA 75-4304 regarding contract between the county attorney budget and O'Hare Law LLC. Do I have a second? Motion will die for lack of second. Do you have anything else before this board? Um, you just indicated that you know you're you're not interested in doing that. Does that mean that I'm to interpret that your personal opinion is the ultimate authority here? You can interpret it any way you want to. If you're sure that you're right in your assumptions, then why are you afraid to request an attorney general? Do you opinion? think I'm afraid? Yes, I do. Yes. So be it. Okay, if you're not afraid, then why, then if you're if you're sure of your assumptions, then then why would you not get that affirmation to to put my question to rest? Do we have anything else come before this board? Yes, I move to allow commissioners access to read-only documents. for computer electronic research, reducing clerk's office secretarial duties to the commission. Do I have a second? Motion dies to lack of second. I move to schedule the end of the month meeting to an evening time to encourage public attendance. Do I have a second? Motion dies for lack of second. My last point of discussion is um, what what are your plans to address some of the problems that we're facing in the county? Can can you identify any of those problems verbally? You know, somewhere along the line, I think you've got the feeling that I answer to you. But I answer my constituents, that's who I answer to. So you can ask me all the questions you want to ask me. I don't care. If I want to answer, I will. If I don't, I won't. Do you have any questions for me? No. Does your lack of a response indicate that you don't feel that we have any issues to be dealt with within I the county? You. 
somewhere along the line you got the idea that I have to answer.